Information fueled. Opinion driven. This is Nashville's Morning News with Dan Mendes. And so, my fellow Americans, we talk news. 807, Nashville's Morning News on Super Talk, 997 WTN. Good morning to your friends. It is Thursday, October 17th. Hope you're doing well along with uh, Joan Jones and Johnny B. I'm Dan Mandis. E.J. Host is joining us on the Newsmaker Hotline. And E.J., I know how much you enjoy all things political. You're like a political animal. So we've been talking about the uh, interview, Brett Baer and uh, Kamala Harris. Been playing audio all morning long. So just give me your your general perception of how it went and then we'll go from there sure so i i want to applaud brad bear like most everybody else for pushing her harder than she's been pushed this, thus far using graphics using clips her own words against her that was pretty remarkable right that really hasn't been something that she's had to go up against yet So that's good. I was a little disappointed, though, quite honestly, that it's the same topics over and over again, because that allows her to go on these long tangents. So I did we want to talk about immigration. He did a good job with it. He did a better job than anybody else. But maybe we could have switched up the topics a little bit. So I'm I'm not in the camp that like, wow, that was great. Stick a fork in her. She's so (laughs) like I'm seeing a lot of people on social media say and and on all the, you know, the news shows this morning, the right saying that she's toast, the left is saying she did a great job. Um, I just personally would have preferred some more variants in the topics. I I think the the one thing about uh, immigration where he did it differently is he was trying to move her away from the, and I'm going to air quote this, bipartisan Senate deal that Donald Trump killed. And he tried to pin her down on the removing uh, the remain, remain in Mexico policy, you know, all those executive orders. And, and so I think that what he was trying to do, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but he was trying to pin her down on that because nobody ever asks her about immigration in that way to get her Agreed. to admit that they made mistakes, you know, the first uh, couple of days with all those executive orders. Right. I, I agree. And and anybody who's doing a, a fact check or or watching it over again will definitely see that. So, I, like I said, I, I he did it in a way that was better than anybody has so far. Yep. Um, and, and it really that was such a great way to start the tone of the whole 26 minutes because it threw her back on her heels. Um, and I thought that that part of it was brilliant. Yes. I don't think she was expecting the. The question about uh, Joe Biden, I don't think she was expecting mm. the, the question about uh, Joe Biden and his cognitive decline. I do have uh, that audio. He's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. Is unstable. He is unstable. But uh, he's not well. well you say talking about Donald Trump. He's mentally not stable. Uh, he's not. Let stable. me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden, I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room, and he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions. So basically, uh, EJ, as you know, they just went back and forth, and she never actually admitted that she feels like uh, Joe Biden is unstable and so forth, instead uh, using that description for Donald Trump. So either yeah, she either has... The yes, exactly right. I mean, that, that minute, the, that second and a half of silence really spoke volumes. And so I, I think it's one of two things. As she sits there and talks about how Joe Biden, you know, is uh, sharp as attack and all these other things, she either has terrible judgment or she's lying. Right. I I think it's probably a little of both. She has terrible political judgment and doesn't know how to um, answer a question in a way that the interviewer will be satisfied with her answer. Um, You know, she literally said he has the experience. Joe Biden has the experience to do what he has done. What does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's not a real sentence. So it's, it's not something people would say in normal everyday conversation. And and I think that's what voters are looking for are, is somebody who you can have an actual conversation with. And she doesn't have that political acumen. Um, I think she did years ago. So it's odd to see this 
fall of her, right? But I also think that she's still arrogant. So she still thinks that she's doing okay, which is why her cadence get, goes up. She gets high-pitched. She's clearly uncomfortable. So whether it's a coping mechanism with not liking the question or she's just, you know, struggling with answering, answering the questions, her arrogance is still kind of poking out there here, too. Let me ask you a question. Brett Bear mm. is um, Brett Bear is, of course, doing interviews and talking about how the interview ended. You know, I'm talking like four people waving their hands, like it's got to stop. Uh, so, Martha, final, yeah, um, I had to dismount there at the end. There's so many. <laughs> so, a lot of people talking about uh, Brett Bear and how four people were telling him to wrap up. He said during the interview, "I'm getting the hard rap." Right. You're you're media savvy. I'm sort of media savvy. That doesn't really look good for Kamala no. Harris because the the interview wasn't going well, and they're giving the hard rap to Brett Bear. In fairness to Kamala Harris, they started late. She may have had to have another. She may have had another appointment or another whatever, and mm -hmm. maybe they legit had to go. But it just doesn't look bad because it makes it look like. She was trying to get out of an interview that wasn't going well. Right, for sure. And and he described that showing up late in a really great way. He was he compared it to icing the kicker in a football game, right? Where, you know, you line up and you're ready to go, but then, you know, the other team calls a timeout just so that they can give you a hard time. And and he felt like the uh campaign was late. I don't know whether on purpose or kind of stumbling, bumbling or whatever yeah. and, and trying to throw him off his game. You're not going to do that with a Brett Bear. Like he's so seasoned. You're not going to throw him off his game. He was prepared for everything. And I mean, he, d he did do a much better job than probably most people thought he would. He tends to be kind of squishy. Um, and, and that being late didn't didn't phase him at all. You know, people telling him to wrap up at the end. You know, he made sure to say. Let, you know, your people are wrapping me up. I'm, this isn't me. <laughs> I would sit here all day, you know. And, well, uh, and, and I think part of I don't of, think it looks good for the campaign. Yeah. And, and part of that, too, I, I think that he was trying to cut through all of those, you know, very standard answers that she always gives. He was trying to cut through her talking points. And so when uh, he's he's going through these questions and he seems very, um, What's the right word? Like in a hurry. You know what I mean? It's like sure. he, he's not going to let her bloviate for, you know, a minute and a half to two minutes because the interview was cut short because they were late. So when they right. say, well, Brett Bear came in hot. Well, you know why he came in hot? Because he had 10 minutes chopped off of the interview that is very important for the American people to see. Right. They promised him 30 minutes. They promised him five to five thirty or whatever it was to to tape it and then it would show you know he'd have time to get it in the editing room or whatever and he did promise to not edit it um and they made sure that that time frame they didn't stick to their end of the bargain and then he did say too that when uh when they arrived they said oh well you know maybe 20 minutes or so even though they had already agreed to 30 so they were trying to play games with it i thought he did a, a good job of of managing all of that now the left is saying last night and this morning oh well he kept cutting her off and he was inter you know interrupting her and that was to be expected but when when an interviewer asked you how many they're expecting an answer that includes a number when when an interviewer asks when when was did you know that joe biden that is a that's a time that's a point in time you have to come back with an answer that includes a point in time and if you don't do that and you've only given me 20 to 30 minutes and you're already late and your people are already saying hey let's move this thing along i, I don't think he's you know with with out of out of the um i don't know i don't think he's being rude i guess to to talk over her and, and demand an answer to the question well and listen for people that that are saying that uh, and there there's audio on msnbc of one of i don't know who it was but you know saying that uh, you know brett bear was a racist and sexist for talking over a, a black woman and all this other kind of crap it's like okay but he would do the same thing to anyone so sure. he shouldn't and and they would do it to any Republican. Have you ever watched them on oh, their show? They never yes, it. yes, I have. EJ, we were talking uh, earlier, we were speaking earlier, uh, Joan Jones and I uh, was about uh, these earrings that people keep obsessing over. Every morning I have, when there's a Kamala whatever, 
interview, debate, whatever. She's wearing the same earrings, and people swear that those are these these listening devices of some sort. Uh, conspiracy theory, maybe more than some sort of reality. What do you think? You know, it's. I think I find it very interesting because they they do look. I mean, it's not similar. They look exactly like the Nova earrings. I just. Um, posted on X, actually, for anybody who wants to go to at EJ under the radar to see what these things look like. Um, I don't know. It could have been that she started with these earrings or whatever a while ago, and now she wears them so that they can say Republicans are conspiracy theorists. Yeah. Right. Like that. It could very well be that they are not actually earphone earrings. Um, but she's going to wear them so that that's the topic of conversation every time she has some sort of an interview so that if it goes bad, they've got something to fall back on. That could, that could be the case. Um, or they just, they're not even all that attractive. Let's be honest. She has better, better jewelry. You know, she wears the same two necklaces and the same two pairs of earrings. And and that's kind of odd. Most women usually switch it up a little. So um, I don't know what the purpose is for her wearing those earrings now, because remember her, her, questions that the, the answers rather are pre-programmed in her brain right and and so she it would stand a reason she probably doesn't even need those anymore she just says the same stuff over and over and over again so well and and i'll go ahead and take that a bit of a step further maybe a half step further i don't think that she is and i'm not calling her dumb i just don't think that she's the smartest person in the room i don't think that she would have the mental ability to get a, to be able to receive all that input you know what I mean? You're trying to talk right. and then you have all these people speaking in your ear. I just don't think that she has the the ability to deal with that out on a debate stage or during an interview. But, you know, whatever. I, I think that wh- I, I could see them feeding her, feeding her like pivot to Trump and just say that or yeah. you, or, you know, th- this is where the middle class kid, you know. Well, but, but here's <laughs> like, the th- I, here, here's I, the thing, though. It's not if that's what's going on, it's not helping. Right. It's not working. And, no. and again, pre-programmed, scripted answers. She probably doesn't need earphones in her ears. Um, yeah. And if it, like you said, I mean, if they're there, she's not listening anyways. Yep. I mean, <laughs> there's nobody on the other end of those things that's giving her any good advice. So. All right. All right. Real, real quickly. Not one sure. more thing. And we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. And it's happening at levels that nobody thought possible. President Trump, as you know, the FBI says overall violent crime is actually coming down in this country. But Excuse President me, Harris, the FBI, defraud, the- they were defrauding statements. They, they didn't include the worst cities. All right. So as we know, David Muir out there fact checking Donald Trump during the debate with Kamala Harris. Lo and behold, yesterday we find out, although I think this was. There was another report on this a week or two ago, but the FBI quietly revised the U.S. crime statistics to actually show that there was a massive increase in violent crime. People say they've never seen this kind of an adjustment before. I've spoken about this. The Biden administration made it really difficult for these cities to report their crime statistics so they didn't even bother and so it it really sort of skewed the the crime statistics so that it made it look like crime was down when in reality it was really high it skyrocketed because of course what we know with the soft on crime policies of the democrats and all of that kind of stuff so donald trump once again we find out the man was right It's too little too late because David Muir is not going to come out and apologize. But I thought that was a fascinating story where all of a sudden, for the first time in ever, the FBI revises the U.S. crime statistics to show that it was way up. What do you think? Um, I think our system is so broken and it's very sad that um, that this would even be a thing. Like you said, first time in history that they've come out and done something to this. Um, It's just It's very sad. And honestly, if we don't get Donald Trump in, there's no chance that we can fix it. And I don't think it's going to be fixed in four years with just Donald Trump at the helm. I mean, I think we need probably 12 years of good, solid, not just Republican, but good, solid American patriots Mm -hmm. at the White House, in Congress, in the three letter agencies. Um, It's going to take a long time to drain the swamp. Um, but we don't have a chance of Kamala's in office. 30 seconds or less. Are you for early voting or voting on day of? I've always been day of until this year. 
Um, I've, I've been sort of convinced that it is beneficial for us. My biggest concern isn't, you know, they, they say, oh, well, they'll stop texting you if you vote and, you know, you won't get the mailers anymore. And that's, that's enticing. But I think the best part is um, that they can't pull shenanigans with, like, turning the power off like they did in Maricopa County on the day of mm-hmm. and your vote doesn't count. So at least I can track it. I'm going to go ahead and vote, vote early today. Um, and and then I can track that my vote has been cast. I don't love it. I want to get back to pre- in precinct um, on day of voting, you know, and you get a mail-in ballot only for special circumstances. 